everybody. Happy Friday. Hope you're having a good week and uh, looking forward to a wonderful weekend. Today it's story time. Last week we were in the kitchen mucking around and uh, making peanut butter cookies. Today we're going to have story time about a food-related topic and also Route 66, although this, I, this particular item uh, is connected to Route 66. It isn't actually on Route 66, but just off. What am I talking about? Well, the world's largest ketchup bottle. Let's hear the story, shall we? Ask any bean counter to calculate how much ketchup was consumed on Route 66 since its inception, and they would probably tell you a heck of a lot. Maybe the amount of tomato puree would even be enough to pave the highway from Chicago to Los Angeles many times over. For good or ill, Americans love ketchup, the go-to condiment for burgers, hot dogs, french fries, and more. In the mid-20th century, the movers and ketchup bottle shakers of Collinsville, Illinois, recognized this love affair with the red sauce, and in its honor erected a larger-than-life monument befitting its stature. What is officially known as the world's largest ketchup bottle, trademarked as such, now stands as a prime example of roadside Americana on Route 159, just south of downtown. And make no mistake, this bottle is big, measuring an impressive 170 feet tall. The story of the famed ketchup bottle begins in 1891, when local businessmen raised a stake of $5,000 to build what was initially called the Collinsville Canning and Packing Company. In 1907, brothers Everett and Elgin Brooks assumed ownership and ran the place as the Triumph Ketchup and Pickle Company. They produced a full line of edible products, including chili beans, spaghetti, hominy, soups, and other canned and bottled goods. But it was the ketchup they sold under their brand name, Brooks, that sold the best. Believe it or not, Brooks ketchup was once America's best-selling ketchup. American Cone and Pretzel took over the plant in 1920, and G.S. Suppiger grabbed the reins in 1933. Both kept the original brand alive, and for good reason, what was originally called Brooks Tabasco flavored ketchup was preferred by St. Louis consumers two to one over all other brands combined. Of course, the McAhenney Tabasco Company wasn't thrilled with the name and threatened a lawsuit. It seems they had copyrighted Tabasco, so the Suppigers simplified, renaming their moneymaker Brooks Old Original. In 1947, the plant needed a reliable supply of pressurized water for their new sprinkler system. And that's when the idea for the ketchup bottle came to life. Company president Suppiger wanted a 100,000 gallon water tower that would mimic the distinctive tapered silhouette of the company's famous ketchup bottle. In 1949, his vision was real reality built on site by the W.E. Caldwell Company of Louisville, Kentucky. The money-making ketchup continued well into the 1950s until Brooks Foods merged with P.J. Ritter Company. In 1960, Suppiger family cashed out, and all ketchup-making moved to Indiana. The remaining buildings were used as warehouses until 1993, when Brooks' parent company, Curtis Burns, Incorporated sold the operation yet again, and the sweet smell of pureed tomatoes wafting through town became but a memory. At the time, they offered to deed the ketchup bottle water tower to the city of Collinsville, but the town declined, citing the high cost of painting and maintaining it. Enter the Ketchup Bottle Preservation Group, a local concern that stepped in to save the tower. They mounted a nationwide campaign called Paint It! The goal was to give the landmark a fresh coat of paint and structural repairs. A year later, Larry Eckert of Bethel Eckert Enterprises bought the plant. 
His use for the 90,000 square foot building was housing commissary goods that his company shipped to military bases in the Midwest. He proved a good caretaker and watcher over the monuments to paint jobs. The first organized by the Preservation Group in 1995 and the second in 2009. But his business downsized in 2014. The Collinsville bottle was once again under a for sale sign. Now, anyone who can afford to pay the bargain basement price of $500,000 can own a piece of American roadside nostalgia. A bona fide classic that was accepted into the National Register of Historic Places in 2002. For $500,000, you get the ketchup bottle and the warehouse, Eckert was quoted as saying in the St. Louis Post Dispatch. I'm hoping that whoever buys it loves the bottle and respects its history. Whether that happens or not remains to be seen, since the site comes with no federal funds for upkeep. Any new owner will have the option to keep the water tower intact or tear it down. For the endless miles of highway that are paved with ketchup memories, and all the diehard fans who harbor a hankering for the tangy, the tearing down option for this tower would likely be the target for a handful of rotten tomatoes. <laughs> so there we go. Maybe if you live in the uh, Collinsville, Illinois area, uh, and you happen to watch this video, you could let us know what happened. If, it, uh, if the tower and warehouse sold, and if the new owners are keeping the tower intact or not, I haven't heard. So it would be interesting to know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's uh, tangy story about ketchup. Isn't that amazing? Until in the 1950s, up until the 1950s, Brooks ketchup was the number one seller. I think today it would probably probably be B. Hines, uh, would be my guess. Maybe maybe Del Monte, but I doubt it. Uh, I'm a fan of Heinz ketchup. I've tried French's, I've tried Del Monte, I've tried other brands, and they're okay. But I always go back to Heinz. Anyway, well, I hope you've enjoyed today's story. And we'll have a great weekend. And until Tuesday with Tuesdays with the Pilgrim, take care, stay safe.